It's another day and it's another trip, but this time we're taking Air Asia for a change. Stick around as we show you what it's like to fly aboard this budget carrier now that restrictions for air travel has greatly loosened up. Check out our trip aboard Air Asia featuring its crew members, their in-flight service, especially those sumptuous and delectable meals. Our same-day return trip to CDO just here on Airline Travel and Airports. We're flying out of Manila's old domestic terminal, also known as Terminal 4, where we're met with long lines just to make it inside. At the entrance, we're asked to present both our ticket and IDs before we can get inside this terminal, where only a few steps away, we needed to go through another security check. Now after having our bags screened by x-ray, we're off to get our boarding passes. With no luggage to check in, we're skipping the long lines to the counter and instead, we're using AirAsia's self-check-in kiosks located at one side of the departure hall. Yes, it's that convenient where after simply entering our names and locator numbers on the screen, our boarding passes are printed in no time. It's that easy and it's that quick. From there, we move along further into the hall, witnessing the jam-packed area full of passengers having to line up at the counters where some need to check some bags or need to settle some add-on services for their flight. Meanwhile, we just need to go through one final security check. Yeah, we passed through security and uh, it's a nice gate area. And so we made it to the gates, with this place resembling that of a bus terminal rather than an airport. Well, it sure looks like one to me, and I wonder how it can hold all these passengers, including the crowd at the check-in counters, in case they make it all here. Not minding the chaos around, me and travel buddy Kenneth simply just walked along looking at items sold on one side of this hall. And since we've pre-booked some in-flight meals earlier, we decided to save a few bucks from buying snacks at this time, settling in one area where we juiced up our gadgets to last our same-day return trip. Not too long and passengers for our flight were called for boarding. As I advised Kenneth, we'll be one of the last few people to go, since Terminal 4 is quite favorable to us plane spotters. The fun part here, it's getting to walk towards the plane and seeing the entire aircraft up close before getting inside. Despite my frequent travels, I can't help get mesmerized at the sight of planes. But we gotta move along. I haven't tried Air Asia for a long while, and it just feels good to be back on board. Reminding me of pre-pandemic times, savoring the sights from its black leather seats, its crew members in their red uniforms, and their version of their safety demo. All's just happening too fast that we started moving, with flight attendants going around for final safety checks, and that we're soon taking off before we knew it. Once up in the air, and with seatbelt signs still on, there's just one thing to do for now. My usual inspection of my seat pocket. Now let me just check what stuff they got here, compared to the time I took Air Asia before the pandemic. Yup, they got the usual air sickness bag that looks generic without the Air Asia logo printed on it. Then the usual laminated safety card that has back-to-back -back illustrations and instructions on what to do during an emergency. Next is what I'm more interested in looking at. 
catalog featuring in-flight meals for sale that you can pre-book online or purchase on board. Now, if you don't mind the prices and got a few bucks to burn, you'll never go hungry in any AirAsia flight. And yes, we've chosen to try the nasi lemak among other meals featured as only AirAsia has this compared to any local carriers in the Philippines. Thinking of taking a souvenir from your AirAsia flight? They got some merchandise available, ranging from tumblers, caps, keychains, and model planes. Other than that, they have a wide selection of light snacks, and surprisingly, they do sell hard liquor. Now I doubt you're gonna drink those very pricey ones on board. With the seatbelt sign eventually turned off, Kenneth moves next to my seat. And not too long, crew members are seen pushing their cart along the aisle. And within minutes, they started distributing meals to passengers who pre-ordered them. In our case, our order of in-flight meal was eventually handed out, introducing this popular Malaysian dish of nasi lemak for Kenneth to try. Of all the other meals sold on board, for me, this is the most aromatic and the most flavorful. Now I just gotta see if Kenneth will enjoy this, especially the red sauce called sambal. While having our breakfast, crew members began offering merchandise for sale, which got us interested as some items go as low as 100 pesos. Unfortunately, we can't do any transaction for now as Ken here is so distracted from the spicy sauce that he's beginning to breathe through his ears. Moments later, all's calm inside the cabin, except for Kenneth, who can't move on as the spice continued to linger. We hardly noticed it's been an hour into the flight and crew members are again seen going around the cabin. With our plane now descending, disposable items are then collected. In a few minutes more, crew members began cabin preparations for landing. Tray tables are asked to be stowed, window shades are raised, and passengers are asked to get their seat backs set upright. That's how it is, a routine passengers are asked to do for safety as we got nearer and nearer to our destination. A few more minutes pass, we descend from the clouds, and we were finally getting to Lagindingan Airport for landing. Finally, we've touched down at Lagindingan Airport after a flight that lasted about an hour and a half. And soon as our plane came to a complete stop, we decided to be the last ones to disembark, taking our chance to get a short visit to the flight deck for some photo ops with our pilots. Unfortunately, we were told that turnaround is gonna be quick, as in really quick. So instead, we just had to disembark right away, passing through a remarkable sight of unoccupied rows of seats airline aficionados like us can surely enjoy. And as much as we wanted to go slow, we just gotta go upon learning that boarding for this return flight back to Manila has already commenced. 
So off we go, exiting the aircraft and into the terminal via the aero bridge, savoring the atmosphere of the airport. Much to our surprise, we're met by passengers along the way who are all bound for Manila. Talk about Air Asia's fast turnaround. Na kami ng boarding. Saan yan, okay. Thank you. Na na kami ng boarding. Hala. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a short distance from the aero bridge all the way down to baggage claim. And without any check in luggage to collect, we find ourselves making our way out to arrivals and into a taxi stand where we arranged for a ride to take us to any nearby place where we can take a nap for a few hours as we were flying back to Manila later in the afternoon. And so it's been decided we head off to a nearby beach resort where we can unwind for a bit. And we sure got there in no time. Originally, our plan was to bring home products from Cagayan de Oro to sell back in Manila. But since I have an upcoming trip to Zamboanga City two days from now, I decided to just hold on to my funds and instead focus on new products Zamboanga has to offer. Which means our trip here becomes a vacation that lasts until the afternoon of the same day. Taking a very early flight sure takes its toll and we just had to get some sleep. We're lucky to get a good room in this resort for only 1,000 pesos for half a day's accommodation. But before a much needed sleep, we just had to check out the beach. A few meters away from our room are cottages next to the shore. With the low tide exposing seashells and other crustaceans, we just gotta scour along the sands, finding some fiddler crabs which we toyed around for a bit before putting them back to the sea and going back to our agenda that we still needed to get some sleep. Later in the afternoon, we head back to Legendingan Airport to catch our Air Asia flight back to Manila. It seems we just went here to sleep and now we're taking another trip. And now back to departures we go, lining up at the entrance to show our ticket and IDs while making our way inside to check in for a flight. That's how it is in airports here in the Philippines. Upon entering the departure hall, there was plenty of people crowding the place. Unlike in PAL where I hold a premier elite status, we're taking budget carrier Air Asia. And with no check-in kiosks around, I gotta get myself at the end of a very long line that'll take a long while till we get to the counters. Dito pagka budget carrier, ka naghihintay ka ng 10 years sa pila. Hindi <laughs> ka tulad sa PAL doon, VIP tayo. Kaso di tayo PAL ngayon eh. After lining up for almost half an hour, we reached the counters where agents offered us exit row seats as a sign of goodwill. With all the chaos, we got our boarding passes overlooking that we didn't get any window seat. Anyhow, we reached the gates, which is jam-packed with passengers. Instead of finding a place to sit, we thought of looking around what's sold in case we need to get something at the last minute. For those who'd like to bring home stuff like pastel and chiding peanuts, they have it here at airport prices though. And since we weren't able to go far from the airport to Viandep's main branch in Bulwa, I'm treating myself to some pastry Cagayan de Oro is also known for. Soon, it was time for boarding. And in this cattle hall, everyone seems to be in a mad rush to get inside the plane. For me and Kenneth, we just let everyone board ahead, sparing us the frenzied atmosphere often experienced when taking a budget carrier. From there, we take things slow. With a number of people lining up to board, I can say this is gonna be a full flight. And true enough, it is. And all we gotta do now is look for our assigned seat located somewhere in the middle of the cabin. As mentioned, we were excited to have been given exit row seats, but unfortunately, we failed to check if one of us has the one with the window. Oh well, it's evening and there's nothing much to see outside, so I hope there's something better in store for us later. This is your seat box. To pass it, slide the bevel tip into the buckle and tighten the belt by pulling on the buckle strap. Start passing, beat the bevel strap. Whenever your seatbelt sign is on, you must return to your seats and fasten your seatbelt securely. Should an oxygen mask automatically drop the compartment above your seat, you need to take home a pass well, all Kenneth can do is ask the person next to him if he can stretch out his arm to get a few clips outside from time to time. Whereas for me, I don't really mind as it's an evening flight and I'm happy with all the space I got. As usual, I dig into my seat pocket to see what we have. It seems someone took my catalog as both Kenneth and the person next to him have them in their seat pockets. Not too long and with everyone strapped to their seats, our plane accelerates and takes off from Lagindingan Airport. Once at cruising altitude, crew members begin presenting snacks and drinks for sale. My tip, 
if you're flying Air Asia, it's cheaper if you order your meals ahead of time. And after Kenneth's spicy encounter with the nasi lemak earlier, he's getting something else. Later, what came in as a surprise was how one crew member was able to recognize me from my blogs on YouTube. But I think the highlight here is how Kenneth gets relieved upon getting something not as spicy compared to the meal he had this morning. Right after meals, crew member John Philip sets up his cart in front and begins presenting merchandise for sale on board. And a lot more. Please feel free to browse through the menu for the full range of items sold exclusively on board. And stop us to purchase these items for your love. Right after that, we wait for crew members John and Pamela at the rear galley for a quick camaraderie, interviewing them for some insights which will be posted soon on another blog. And, not to forget, a few souvenirs with them through selfies. With our plane beginning to descend, our flight attendants do the routine of preparing passengers for landing. A few minutes after that, the spectacular display of lights down below begin to appear. We were soon arriving and touching down into Manila. Our plane begins to slow down, and once we came to a complete stop, crew members prepare to open the doors and for passengers to disembark. As usual, I tell Kenneth we'd be the last ones to leave, but before that, I just had to ask if these Air Asia crew members I've featured before are still with the company. And despite what happened to the aviation industry during pandemic, I'm glad to know these crew members I flew with are still around. After thanking them for their service, I segue into asking if we can take photos with our pilots, and this time, our chances were high as we were sent off to their lead crew member up front. After being introduced to another Air Asia staff, it was only a matter of minutes when our pilot came out to see us. From there, we had the chance to interview them and take a few snapshots really quick as another set of crew members were scheduled to board. But we're very grateful that our pilot took some time to share some insights and to accommodate our request to have our photos taken with them at the flight deck. Now we may not have had a window seat on this flight, but our trip's finale of getting to visit the flight deck was way worth it. I guess this one with the front view is a better window seat. With our quick time at the flight deck, it was time to go, thanking our pilot and bringing awesome souvenirs through photos and video clips as we disembarked. And so this concludes our same day return trip with Air Asia. Awesome crew and awesome in-flight experience. Should there be more promo fares, we will be flying Air Asia again. With travel buddy Kenneth Montagot, this is Mitch Young. Thank you very much for watching.